Hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy Token and we are back with a brand new draft analysis for the IPBL this time around as it is in season one. This is initially going to be the D2 to the IBL, another um, international battle league, um, different from the Indigo Battle League, but another thing that used the acronym IBL. Um, however, the IBL, I don't know if it kind of like fell apart or whatever, but um, the Commissioner of the league decided that he'd rather make the IPBL the D1, and he's trying to make the IBL the D2. So shout-outs to him, Dark Devil. He's an amazing guy. Um, he's a very hard worker, and he's a very ambitious person. Shout-out to him. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description, as well as uh, definitely go check out his Twitter if you're interested in the league, because I do think that the IBL D2 is currently still accepting applications. So if that's something you're interested, definitely try to get in touch with him, and maybe you can end up being um, starting your own franchise and maybe working your way into the IPBL for next season. So yes, guys, this is going to be another Wi-Fi upload league, which I'm very excited about. I definitely wanted to. After the NPL, um, it was fun. It was a good time. But um, um, after not getting promoted as well as it just being a showdown league, I really want to focus my attention on uh, Wi-Fi leagues as I feel like they showcase your uh, skills a little bit better than um, – than showdown leagues do so i'm very excited to be able to be in two wi-fi leagues and bringing you guys this very fun content so i hope you guys are excited um that we'll be taking on two different leagues and hopefully we can um bring home two championships that's the goal so um, i'll be trying my best to do that for you guys um, i'm decently busy though so sometimes you see a very bad effort from me some weeks such as week one considering this is coming out this uh video is coming out after week one already went up for the ipbl um, if you see efforts that bad, just know that it was because I was busy and I wasn't fully able to prioritize stuff. But I will not let that get in the way of us still making playoffs and stuff. I still feel very good about our chance to make playoffs. And we have a very, very, very threatening team that we were able to draft. Um, I was very content with the earlier parts of my draft. And then things started to things started to fall apart a little, mainly because one crucial snipe happened. We'll get into that. So pretty much in the draft, I was about like the seventh pick. So kind of that middle point. So... Uh, not too terrible, but not too good either, considering that when it comes to will picks and snake drafts, being in the middle kind of sucks. Um, however, though, I still like the team we're able to draft, and I especially like these first two Pokemon we're able to draft. So let's just get into our first our first Pokemon that we were able to draft in the IBL Season 1, IPBL Season 1, and that is going to be this beauty that you guys know is Tapu Koko. Yes, Tapu Koko was the Pokemon we were able to get, and actually, let me do some quick... Some quick editing here. Uh, I just feel like you can't really see its name. Would that have just a tad? Yeah, that was too, that was too far down. Sorry about that, guys. All right, there we go. But all right, yeah, guys. Tapu Koko. Um, I'm a huge fan of all the Tapus. I think they're all extremely, extremely strong, especially when leagues allow Lele for whatever ignorant reason. Sorry, but I do not think Lele should be allowed in leagues. But um, even, yeah, when leagues allow Lele, obviously it's super strong. But I think I'm a fan of all the Tapus. I was able to use Finny well, and I feel like a lot of people think Finny's the worst out of the trio, uh, the four of them. Um, however, though, um, I like the Tapus, so when one's there, I'm more than likely going to snag it. Tapu Koko was sitting there staring at me with its glory, with its very strong offensive prowess, just staring, sitting there at 7th looking at me, and I was like, I cannot pass up on this thing. I really wanted to. I actually wanted to use this more than I wanted to use Spinny initially in the MPL Division 2. However, I wasn't able to snag it. This time around, it was there. It was looking at me. There was no chance I wasn't going to snag this thing. So, yes, we, will, we did take Tapu Koko with our first overall, with our first round pick. And uh, obviously it gets the Electric Surge, which makes it such a more threatening Pokemon, considering that Electric's really hard to switch into. In general, not many things resist it. And um, if you don't have a strong ground type or you don't bring your ground type, then you have no immunity. So Electric's just a strong Electric type attacks are very threatening in Draft League format. And to have this quality of a Electric and Fairy type is very good. However, I'm used to more defensive Fairy types, so it'll be interesting to have such an offensive Pharrell Fairy type for once. But um, I do think we could do some damage with this. So obviously Tapu Koko can run a plethora of different items. Choice Specs, Choice Scarf, kind of. I don't really see us bringing that, uh, considering how fast Tapu Koko is. Um, Assault Vest if necessary. Even Choice Band, because it really doesn't have a bad at attack set as well. So that's another thing I really like, is its ability to be ran mixed. Life Orb is something I see us bringing a lot. And then uh, a few other items, Shuckleberry and stuff like that. Um, we can run as items for Tapu Koko um, if need be. Um, 
But looking at Tapu, Tapu Koko's moveset, um, on the physical end, it does get Brave Bird. Um, it does get Calm Mind, which is really cool to make it a little bit more um, defensive. If my opponent only has some special attackers left, I can Calm Mind up and maybe just sweep their team with Tapu Koko. So that's pretty pretty cool. Dazzling Game, it doesn't get a nice uh, physical fairy type attack, which really is sad. So when running running the physical side, I might run mixed a decent amount just so I still have that fairy stab as well. Moves like Discharge with a 30% chance to pair is always nice. Grass Knot, so I can still hit a lot of ground types. Pure ground types, really hard. Uh, not not so much uh, the the ones with secondary, some other secondary typings, but things like uh, Dawn Fan and other grass types can still hit them hard. With uh, ground types can still hit them hard with Grass Knot when they try to switch it into my electric type attacks. Light Screen's an interesting option to have on Tapu Koko. Nature's Madness, if I know that my opponent has a really quality switch in into Tapu Koko, I can still half its health every single time it switches in with Nature's Madness, which is beautiful. Uh, quick Attack, so it does get priority, and like I said, its attack set is very usable. Reflect, so it does get dual screens, which is awesome. Um, won't really be run and return, but it's good to just see. Um, Roar is pretty interesting. Don't really see us using that too often. It does give Roost, so uh, Tapu Koko does give reliable recovery as well, which is pretty freaking fantastic. Um, then obviously it's strong stabs and thunder and thunderbolt, thunder wave as well, so I can paralyze stuff. And then it gets a bolt switch initiative moves in a uh, U-turn and bolt switch. So that is, uh, and then wild charge as well, so you can hit extremely hard on that physical end. If you don't want to, um, if your opponent has a really good special defensive wall to counter Tapu Koko, we could go physical and we could go wild, wild charge, and that can still cause some issues for my opponents. But having uh, access to U turn and Volt Switch is beautiful, considering that if I know my opponent has a really good ground type switch in, I can just go U turn, and I U turn out, out of there, and I still get that switch initiative, which is going to be crucial. Excuse me, which is going to be crucial with using Tapu Koko effectively. Um, I don't really think it gets any too, too many other. Um, no worthy moves, more so some stuff for doubles such as sky drop, uh, sky drop, and I guess power swap and psych up. Those are more stuff I could see. A psych up is uh, it's cool to have, but something I see us using more in uh, in doubles than using in singles. And yeah, that's pretty much it. But yeah, Tapu Koko. Ta oh, an Electro Ball. My opponent has a really slow team. Electro Ball can do heaps of damage to my opponent's team. But yeah, that's pretty much Tapu Koko. Um, it gets the moves you need. It, you want you want it to have uh, to be a very threatening offensive Pokemon. And we could just look at its stats now. And um, checking out its stats. Yes, yeah, so it has that 115 attack stats. So that's actually even higher than its uh, uh, special attack stats. So don't definitely don't think I won't be running this thing physical. I will be running physical Tapu Koko. At points this season and it will be doing lots of work to my points team 70 HP which isn't that bad 85 uh, defense not bad it's just that 75 special defense is a little lackluster but they're definitely not terrible and then 95 special attack and that 130 that beautiful 130 speed stat which makes out speed so so many Pokemon that you really have to worry about Tapu Koko being outsped unless it's a uh, Scarf Pokemon. And forcing, I really wanted a fast team this time around, especially since I already got Tapu Koko. So forcing my opponents to run Scarf more often than they probably want to is going to be nice. I can play around these Scarf Pokemon, Pokemon uh, really well. And uh, yeah, Tapu Koko got us off to an amazing start. Switch initiative, very strong offensive um electric type what you want uh i i want i like my electric types to be fast and hard hitting that's what tapu coco is um and then it's my fairy type as well but it's more of a freller offensive fairy type which is a little bit interesting but i do think we'll be able to uh to use that well so knocking out electric and fairy early on in my draft are two crucial typings i'm excited that i got right away um just uh so many so many reliable recovery so many useful moves in Calm Mind and freaking Thunderbolt and Grass Knot. So many just a very versatile Pokemon and the fact that it can be ran mixed is just more of a reason why I'm excited to use Tapu Koko in this season. I feel like we can do lots of damage with it. Um, moving on from Tapu Koko, then we have a Pokemon that I feel is going to mesh or complement it extremely well. And uh, this is a Pokemon that I've also never been able to draft. Um, it's actually not a Generation 7 Pokemon, so I've had opportunities, but it's just never fallen to me. And or when it when it was there, I just always prioritize other stuff. But yes, that is going to be Tornadus Therian, and I am so excited to use this. Oh, and let's even put in our nicknames if I can remember them all. Some I don't even have. Yeah, let's wait on that. I haven't even used some of these Pokemon, so I don't have nicknames for everything. At least I don't think so. 
Do I have nicknames? No, I don't have a nickname for Dooblade. And... But that's it. I think I have a nickname for everything else other than Dooblade. No, and Tank Growth. I don't know. I did have a nickname for Tank Growth. I just can't remember what it is. Anyways, anyways. Yeah, so our second Pokemon is going to be Tornadus Therian. And um, I'm extremely excited to use Tornadus Therian. Mainly because of the way that it complements Tapu Koko, but as well, this Pokemon is just such a threatening offensive powerhouse in its own right. And it has my favorite League format ability in Regenerator. The ability to restore one-third of your maximum HP uh, when it switches out, that's just a beautiful thing. That is such a beautiful thing. And um, to have it on an offensive po Pokemon is just so beautiful, considering that I've had Regenerator plenty of times before. But... Um, I have it on the Reuniclus is my main regenerator baby. That's when I usually have it on. But um, um, it's really good to have it on offensive Pokemon. I love what Pokemon like Mindshow who have high jump kick and they can hurt themselves if they miss high jump kick. Having regenerator is just so beautiful because then it makes it so, oh, if you miss your attack and you take a little bit of damage, it's not the end of the world because then you regenerate it out, get health back, and then you can switch out again because it's because Mindshow gets U-turn and so does this thing. So I can just U-turn off the of threats and get my health back which is going to be beautiful and tornadus has a extremely extremely wide move pool which i'm excited to dive into um obviously tornadus can run a plethora of items in choice scarf if necessary choice specs if you really want to um leftovers it's actually a pretty good leftovers pokemon because it is decently bulky not crazy bulky but when you couple it with regenerator it makes it more bulky um it can even run Choice Band, because once again, just like Tapu Koko, this is a Pokemon that's... This Pokemon's actually usually ran mixed, uh, but it can be ran fully physical or fully special. Um, Assault Vest is probably its most common item. Uh, Life Orb isn't bad. Uh, just Tornadus can run so many different items. And it's going to be one heck of a lot of fun to use this season. And uh, the way that these two, that Tapu Koko and Tornadus, complement each other is the fact that... Um, your opponent wants to bring in, let's say your opponent doesn't bring their ground type, or their ground type's like Garchomp, which isn't a switching into Tapu Koko, or it's like some low tier ground type like Sand Slash, which they might not, likely won't bring to a match. Then, that forces your opponent to pretty much uh, switch in their grass type to resist the very powerful electric type attacks with electric surge up from Tapu Koko. However, Tapu Koko can just Volt Switch off of them, or U-Turn, whichever is more, I feel more comfortable going for for that particular matchup. And then this thing comes in and just threatens the heck out of them with a stab. With a stab. Where is it? Show your face. Where is this move? Oh god, where the heck is that move? It should have been one of the first few ones. I don't see it. Where is it? There we go. What a stab hurricane. Just threaten the heck out of lives. Take lives. Um, bird spam is just so good. And to have, have a stab to have a um, stab hurricanes coming off of a very powerful st attack stat, that's going to be beautiful. Very few things are going to be able to switch into that. And um, it's just going to take lives. And considering we have a generator, if we do miss in, in the scenarios that we do miss hurricane, we can just we likely won't be taken out. Hopefully won't be taken out if it's on something we really need to hit. And then we can just regenerate our health back and then get back up and then go for another one later on. So... Um, Tornadus puts a lot of pressure on the grass types that want to switch it into Tapu Koko. And then um, Tapu Koko puts a lot of pressure on like bulky water types that uh, Tornadus has trouble taking down. As well as puts a lot of pressure on ground type, well certain ground types like Garchomp. And, um, and then it ha does have Grass Knot so if some things are chipped a little bit down it can hurt them with uh, Grass Knot. So um, yeah they complement each other extremely well especially when it comes to their uh, matchups against... Uh, when it comes to Tapu Koko's matchup against grass types, uh, Thunderous really, really, really does help Tapu Koko in that retrospect. Um, it really, it really does. Uh, moving on from that, uh, let's look at this wide move pool that uh, Tornadus gets. So Tornadus can be ran physically or uh, specially or just a mixture of both. And it gets some interesting options such as acrobatics. It gets... Uh, it gets brick. It gets uh, bulk up, not brick breaker really. Concerning, it gets superpower, which is much better. It gets focus blast if you do need to hit a fighting type move off of the special end. It gets a uh, dark pulse. Um, Tornadus gets things like grass knot. It gets heat wave. Um, gets psychic. It gets knockoff. <laughs> it gets sludge bomb, sludge wave. It gets superpower. 
It gets Tailwind if I even want to set up a Tailwind and try to sweep my opponent's team. Concerned that they may have something that's a little bit faster than this and I need to sweep my opponent's team. It gets Taunt, which is actually beautiful as well. Same thing with Tapu Koko. They both get Taunt, which is also really nice with using these as leads to stop um, Stealth Rocks uh, being led on my opponent's end. So two things that get Taunt, which is really nice, and then obviously it gets U-Turn, which is going to be great. With both of these things just switching off my opponent's team, so I was able to prioritize getting two extremely powerful Pokemon at the start of my draft, as well as get a very threatening, um, a very, very threatening Volt Turn, Volt Turn Core. Sorry, that was for some reason way harder to say than it needed to be. Um, but yeah, then Tornadus also gets Icy Wind. It gets, uh, what else do we want to say? I don't think there's anything else that's too big of a deal, but, um, Icy Wind is nice to have considering that it lowers speed and can turn something that thought it was a check and not into a check anymore to this thing. And it gets smacked down as well. So just some really awesome options that Tornadus gets disposal. Oh, and it gets knockoff. I don't know where knockoff was. Should have been somewhere. It gets foul play. Just just there's knockoff. Just so many freaking options on this Pokemon that I can't I literally cannot wait to use these two couple together. Moving on from that, um, Tornadus also has extremely nice stats when you look at it's 100 attack stat and it's 110 special attack stats so you can kind of picture exactly why um why i was saying that it can it's really can be ran either way or it can be ran mixed when you look at those stats as well as the 121 speed set so i continue to get very fast pokemon to continue up the speed that i wanted to have in our draft this season because i've had a lot of slower teams as of um in my prior draft so it was cool to prioritize getting a little bit speedier of a team especially with these first two picks 121 and 130 speed stat have fun trying to outspeed those two without a choice scarf and then obviously some pretty good defensive prowess when you couple them with the regenerator and 79 hp um 80 defense and a 90 special uh defense stat so not bad at all these two are going to mesh together extremely well and um, it's just building off of these two was not that hard. It just sucks that a snipe really did take a toll on our draft. However, though, I'll get into that a little bit more, even though I keep bringing it up. We'll get into that a little bit more. <laughs> but all right. So then um, round three comes around and I'm thinking, let's prioritize getting a spinner because in my prior draft, the IBL, the Indigo Battle League, I wasn't able to prioritize getting a spinner in the early draft, the uh, earlier rounds, early draft, the earlier rounds. And I definitely kind of hurt my team a little bit. Um, it would hurt my team a lot more in this in this one, considering that this team is going to be a decent amount more rocks weak. Especially considering that I have things like Tornadus and then just some more frail Pokemon like Tapu Koko that don't want to switch in on rocks or spikes or toxic spikes too often. So I definitely wanted to prioritize getting a pretty solid rapid spinner. And that's when we get into our first defensive Pokemon. And we get into a lot of defensive Pokemon from here. Because I definitely wanted to make sure that I had quality switch-ins. As I'm not a super hyper offensive player. So I needed to make sure I still had quality defensive uh, synergy as well um, with this team. And considering that I already got those two very fast, very hard-hitting offensive Pokemon. It was about time that I start to prioritize those uh, defensive Pokemon. So first we get into Dawn Fan. And Dawnfen obviously is a spinner. We didn't have a spinner yet. We didn't have a default. So I definitely wanted to get a spinner. So that's what Dawnfen mainly brings to the table. But as well as it brings that very crucial ground type uh, typing to our team. Concerning that Tapu Koko Sprawl. So even powerful electric type attacks. Even though it resists them. That's going to do a lot of damage to Tapu Koko. Uh, and then uh, Tornadus really doesn't want to take um, electric type attacks. So I needed something that was immune to those and can really switch in on those. And that's what Domfan really brought to the table. Domfan can run a plethora of items well, such as Leftovers, Assault Vest, Choice Band, um, uh, obviously Resist Berries. Um, and then just, yeah, there's just a bunch of items you can run on Domfan. It's a Pokemon I am familiar with and comfortable with using. So hopefully we can use it well. Uh, my only issue is that I wish I had a faster uh, ground type because as we get further through the team, you'll kind of see that fire types can be pretty troublesome for our team. Very like bulky but still offensive fire types can give our team some trouble. So uh, you'll you'll start to get an idea of that later in the rounds. And um, um, so I do wish I had a little bit faster of a ground type. That was that's one of the main first issues that I started to recognize on my team, but I wasn't really seeing them as much during the draft as I was when I started to team build for week one. But looking at uh, Domfan's moveset, well, obviously it gets the ability in Sturdy, which is nice to have, but few moves that you switch Domfan on are actually going to knock it all the way down to, uh, all are going to one-hit KO it. So not 
Sturdy's not the absolute best on Don Fan, considering that it's so bulky, it's really going to be one hit KO'd by almost anything. But I guess in certain scenarios, it can come through, especially if you run a, not Shooker Berry, but what is that? If you run that speed, Salic Berry, there we go. If you run Sal some type of Salic Berry set, then um, it could come through for you. However, looking at Don Fan, Don Fan gets, uh, it gets a very powerful Earthquake. It gets Gunk Shot, which is really nice to have for fairies that often want to switch into uh, Don Fan. It gets a uh, gyro ball, so if you're running it really slow and you don't want to use a uh, gunk shot shoddy accuracy, you can run gyro ball and still hit pretty hard. Um, it gets head smash, won't be using that too often, but it does get head smash. It's a very hard hitting rock type move. Um, gets heavy slam, that won't do too much, but it's good to have. It gets priority, and that's what we that's a we did have a quick attack with Tapu Coco, but I don't really see myself bringing that too often. So it was good to have some solid priority now. On the team as well with ice shard on uh, dawn fan so that's also especially ice is such a very uh threatening offensive uh type so it's good to have priority and uh ice shard is solid priority then dawn fan also gets knockoff it gets play rough it gets poison jab obviously it gets rapid spin then it even gets rock polish and i really really want to use rock polish dawn fan considering like i said i wanted to have a faster ground type so maybe i can go for a rock polish and then Don Fan can threaten those Pokemon that it wouldn't threaten initially, such as maybe the Arcanines. And not really Infernape. I'm not sure even after Rock Polish I'll be able to like threaten Infernape. But things like Arcanine, being able to threaten them after a Rock Polish. It gets Seed Bomb as well. Um, it gets Stealth Rocks as well. So that's another thing that Don Fan it brings the spinning and it gives us uh, hazards on our own in. So Don Fan was just such a solid pick. Get Stone Edge, get Superpower. And uh, it just gets the it gets the attacks that we would want a ground type to have, um, very uh, very wide move pool, and then it brings the it brings the not versatility, but it brings the the needed parts of our team that that we needed that we didn't currently have in rapid spin, in hazard removal, and obviously hazards on our own end, and then obviously such a crucial typing in ground. Um, I always want to make sure to get a pretty solid ground type. So that my team doesn't just get Volt switched all over. Um, even if you do get a very solid uh, Grass type, you just you still want to prioritize getting a Ground type because it's just so crucial to actually have an immunity to um, Electric, in my opinion. So we got Dawn Fan, and I'm excited to use it. I'm, I'm I've used it before with decent success, so I'm hoping I can use it even better this time around. I want to run Rock Polish Dawn Fan. Um, and I hope I can use it successfully. We'll see how that goes. I saw MV do it once, but MV is MV, so let's not try to compare <laughs> to him. Uh, moving on to our next pick, though, we do get into another defensive Pokemon, and this one is going to, and I have no clue why my computer decided to go into cap locks, but uh, this one is going to be Tangrowth. And um, Tangrowth is a Pokemon that I've wanted to use for the longest, but every single time I was ready to scoop it, someone else got it. And it was never just there for me. However, this draft, it was staring at me. And just like Tapu Koko, round four came around. It was staring at me. And I was like, I'm taking Tangrowth. Especially because I was now in the point where I felt comfortable prioritizing more defensive Pokemon. And Tangrowth is one of the absolute beasts when it comes to being defensive. And a huge reason why is due to Regenerator, this beautiful ability that you guys are going to see a few times throughout my draft. Already seen it twice. Um, Tangrowth gets Regenerator, so it does get that one third of its health back every time I switch out. Switches out. It does just have the pure grass typing, which is actually a lot better than it's given credit for as a defensive typing. Considering that it gives you the resistance to ground, it gives you the resistance to electric, um, it gives you the resistance to other grass types, it gives you the resistance to water type attacks. They're just very threatening offensive attacks that teams have. Tangrowth resists those, and uh, that's beautiful. We currently didn't have a good water type switch in. We currently didn't have a good ground type switch in. Um, other than kind of Tornadus, but you can't really just bank on your Levitate user being a good switch into ground uh, ground, ground Pokemon. So it's good that we got Tangrowth, which can just really switch in on those pretty much all day, every day with its um, enormous defense set that I'll get into more. But Tangrowth can run a bunch of different items. Um, it mainly does like to run Assault Vest or Leftovers the most. But you can you can get a little cheeky and run some other stuff. You can run an offensive Tangrowth if you really want to, considering that you don't really have to invest much in defense, uh, especially when you consider Regenerator. You don't have to invest much in defense to tank out some resisted hits. So you can run a, a more offensive Tangrowth, maybe with a Life Orb or some type of other item. And saying that Tangrowth does get some pretty uh, hard-hitting moves, 
especially Leaf Storm, uh, which few things can switch into. So that's really nice to have. Tangrowth does get Focus Blast. Um, Tangrowth gets um, Earthquake. Um, and it can be ran physical. Its physical attack isn't laughable. It's nothing crazy, but it's not laughable. It gets Focus Blast. It gets Knockoff. So now we have three Knockoff users. And I love having Knockoff on my team. So that's three Knockoff users now. Um, it also gets Lead Seed. So we can just Lead Seed teams and just be annoying with Tangrowth. It gets Morning Sun. So it does... Well, Morning Sun's not its reliable recovery. It gets Synthesis. So it does have reliable recovery. Um, it gets Power Whip. It gets Poison Jab. So you can't really run a physical... Uh, Tangrowth, maybe even a choice banded one and really throw your opponent off. Don't be surprised if I do run that. Sorry if you heard that. Um, then we have um, Sleep Powder, which is always an interesting option to have. It does have the shoddy 75% accuracy, so the 25% chance to miss. However, though, um, if your opponent really doesn't prioritize bringing a Grass type, or you, you can feel that they have a pretty weak Grass type as well as they don't really want to switch it in on Tangrowth, considering that Tangrowth does get Sludge Bomb, you can go for Sleep Powder and you can make this Pokemon that much more threatening if your opponent doesn't prioritize having a sleep powder switch in. It does get Swords Dance, which is pretty interesting, so that can make it even more threatening on the physical end. And then, like I said, Synthesis for Reliable Recovery. Then some inch other interesting moves, and like Amnesia to make it uh, more bulky on that special defense end. So that's probably uh, Tangrowth's uh, defensive Achilles heel, and the fact that it's a uh, special defense is pretty lackluster. But it does have such an enormous HP stat that you can make up for that, especially with an Assault Vest. But yes, uh, Tangrowth's stats look beautiful with that 100 HP, 100 attack. 125 defense and that 110 special attack so just a very very threatening pokemon the 50 special defense is um it, it leaves it leaves something to be desired but it's not bad especially coupled with an assault vest so then 50 speed it's not meant to be fast it nor dawn fan are meant to be that fast it's meant to switch in tank out hits and be annoying with either leech seed sleep powder knockoff or just uh, hit whatever your opponent thinks is a switch in with its with one of those moves that it does get because it gets more moves than people realize with Focus Blast, Sludge Bomb, Leaf Storm, just a lot of different moves that Tangrowth can use. And I just love having another Regenerator Pokemon. So you could sign kind of see a Regenerator Core also starting to form with Tangrowth and um, um, Tangrowth and uh, Tornado Therian so that we can uh, we can make sure our Pokemon stay at a good amount of health with the generator without having to worry too much about wishing into our Pokemon um, too often. Uh, but yeah, Tangrowth, it synergizes extremely well with Dawn Fan as well. Uh, Tangrowth doesn't want to take fire type attacks. Dawn Fan, if ran really physically, can take those fire type attacks for it. Um, not really on the special end though, so that's where you can kind of see our issues with fire type attacks. Uh, well, fire type Pokemon kind of coming through, but still, they do synergize pretty well Ice type uh, other than ice type attacks. And we'll get into where we finally get a decent switch in into ice types because we currently don't really have one. Tangrowth's weak to them. Dawn Fan's weak to them, Tornadus is weak to them, and Tapu Koko really doesn't want to switch in on anything. So you can kind of see that still being an issue. But so far, so good. I love the defensive Pokemon we were able to snag. We got Rocks, we got uh, Hazard Removal, and then we got a beautiful defensive Pokemon in Tangrowth to just help further complement uh, Dawn Fan. Then we get into our last defensive Pokemon before we get into um, our offensive Pokemon. And this is a Pokemon that I didn't have week one due to a situation that I explained in our week one battle. So I won't really go into it more, anymore. But pretty much someone else drafted this. And then um, I really wanted this Pokemon. And as you guys probably know, this Pokemon kind of helped us win our MPL Division 2 Championship. So I really wanted this. Someone else drafted it. Then we came to a compromise on what we wanted to trade during the draft. But then there was some misunderstandings that caused us not to have it um, week one. But we do have it now going into week two. And that Pokemon is going to be Reuniclus. And this is a Pokemon that I feel extremely comfortable using, considering that it's just the absolute best Calm Mind uh, sweeper in League format, in my personal opinion. I don't think anything sleeps better with Calm Mind. Um, considering that Reuniclus is so bulky that even a knockoff usually doesn't take it out. And then due to re reliable recovery and recover, which is probably my favorite uh, form of reliable recovery, um, it can just... Tank out that knockoff after you knock off its leftovers and then still be at a good amount of health and you're not going to be doing enough damage with knockoff after that. So a lot of teams to stop this Pokemon need an actual dark type Pokemon so that they have stab on their knockoffs or so that they have a stab dark pulse or something so that they can actually hit this thing hard enough. Because otherwise you usually don't hit it hard enough and a lot of teams don't really have a very hard hitting um, ghost type. So 
Psychic is a very good defensive typing. Even though it has few resistances, it just doesn't, it has few things that are actually super effective on it. And when you're as bulky as Reuniclus, you just tank out everything. Um, Reuniclus, I've used so many different items on this thing. You can use Choice Specs if you want. I just love Leftovers though. Um, I've used Leftovers uh, so often and it just always comes through for me. Um, you do have to just just be aware of those dark types that try to pursue trap or uniclus. I feel like I always do a pretty good job of predicting when they're coming in though and do a decent job of using. I'm just very comfortable with uniclus due to using it a good few times. Um, so uniclus does have Calm Mind, like I said, it's my personal uh, favorite. Not even just favorite. I just think it's the best Calm Mind sweeper in the game. It gets Energy Ball, which is a very cool coverage to have. It gets Focus Blast. It gets. Uh, it gets both of the screens, which is interesting. Um, it gets, it gets a uh, pain split. Doesn't matter since you have recovery. It gets size shock, obviously. So that's good to have, considering that some things can switch in on a psychic, but they can't switch in on a size shock. Um, it gets shadow ball, which is very nice for some of those ghost types that try to switch in. Um, it gets signal beam, which is nice for the dark types that try to switch in. And um, then it gets Thunder Wave, which can make it just so un so much more annoying than it already is. And then it gets Trick as well. So if you want to run some some type of weird Reuniclus set, set, you can trick its item onto your opponent. And really, Trick is just a nice, a nice, nice move. I think Trick is one of the most underrated moves in Pokemon. People do not use it enough. Um, you can really just completely nullify a Pokemon's usefulness when it gets the wrong item tricked onto it. And then, um, yeah, and then it gets other options like Acid Armor, which raises its defense two stages. Um, it gets, it just, it gets some very, very good options that just make it a very threatening Pokemon. And obviously, it does also get Trick Room. And as you can see, my defensive walls are all very slow, so don't be surprised if I use Trick Room to turn them all into offensive, uh, to turn them all on the other end to make them all offensive. Because Tangrowth isn't anything to laugh at offensively, Reuniclus isn't either, and definitely Dawnfen isn't either. So don't be surprised if I use Trick Room, even though my team is decently fast, if I use Trick Room just to bring out the offensive prowess of these defensive walls. And then... um. They just quickly look at its stats. Regenerator is the main ability, like I said, that I'm going to be using. But Reuniclus actually does get three completely useful abilities in Overcoat. So that, considering I have Sleep Powder to my disposal, if my opponent tries to use it themselves, I honestly have the best switching into that in uh, Tangrowth. But I also do have Overcoat on Reuniclus, just in case I decide not to bring it. And one second, I am going to do a quick cut because that is probably way too loud. You guys can hear my phone. All right, sorry about that. I thought I silenced my phone, but I guess I didn't. Anyways, anyways, let's get back to Reuniclus. But yes, it does get Overkill, which is very useful. And then Magic Guard is extremely useful because a lot of ways your opponent will try to deal with Reuniclus is by Toxic in it. And Magic Guard obviously disallows your opponent to do any damage with Toxic to Reuniclus. And same thing with Scald Burn. So that's that's beautiful. That is beautiful. It just makes Reuniclus so much more of a pain in your opponent's side to deal with. Uh, Reuniclus obviously has that enormous HP stat with 110. Um, with 110 base HP stat, 75 and defense, 125 special attack stats. So you can really see why Reuniclus becomes so hard to deal with right after one call mine because that makes its 85 special defense so much higher. And then it really makes that special attack really threatening to where it's just chunking things away after that point. Um, and then it's really slow. So don't be surprised, like I said, if Trick Room does come through. But yes, there you go, guys. That's pretty much the defensive synergy that I prioritize in the next rounds. So I did get a really cool Regenerator Core. In Reuniclus and Tangrowth defensively um, to complement my offensive regenerator user in Tornadus T. And then we have Don Fen coming through with the hazard removal as well as hazards. And then, uh, yeah, I just think they all synergize pretty well with each other and it should be very fun to be able to use all these guys. Um, Tangrowth doesn't mind knockoff much, so I could switch that in when Reuniclus has uh, knockoffs coming at it. Just they all synergize really well, and I'm excited that I was able to get such a solid little little trio of defensive Pokemon right there. Uh, so let's just get rid of all these guys and let's go into our next pick as we start to prioritize a few more offensive Pokemon now. So now we get into one, two, three, four, five, six. We get into round six at this point, and another thing is I'm thinking in retrospect of the IBL draft Indigo Battle League because it had already uh, it's draft had already kind of finished up. I'm thinking in my head I wasn't able to prioritize getting a really strong strong. Well I wasn't able to get one of my favorite fighting types. Like I like having an extremely hard hitting fighting type like Terrakion or I like getting a fighting type that hits hard but also has switch initiative. 
And I wasn't able to do that with the IBL, so I really wanted to make sure to do that in the IPBL. And I was able to do that with this next Pokemon that is another personal favorite of mine in Mindshell. Um, another Pokemon, another Pokemon where we generate it. As you guys can see how much I freaking love this ability. Um, it's just so good on offensive and defensive Pokemon. And I especially love it on offensive Pokemon, especially a fighting type that can miss high jump kicks. You can just regenerate out even if you miss a high jump kick or you're fast enough to where you can still just U-turn out and you just get your health back, which is just so beautiful. So many good items you can run on Mindchow, uh, namely like Choice Band, Choice Scarf, and uh, Focus Sash if you must, and, or Life Orb. So some solid items. And then um, I rarely run Reckless. I just feel like Regenerator is so good that running Reckless is really, that is really worth it. Um, just because it gives you like the safety blanket with your high jump kicks as well when you run Regenerator. So I usually like that. But if you guys are a little bit more ballsy than me, then Reckless is actually a really good uh, secondary ability to have to your disposal as well. Uh, Mindshell gets some very solid options from the offensive standpoint. And Drain Punch if you want a little bit of health back when you go for your fine time move or you don't just want to have high jump kick at all because your opponent has like a dark type that can switch in really easily. Um, it gets Fake Out which is really cool priority, nice priority to have. So another Pokemon with some solid priority on our team. Um, it gets, let's keep going down, obviously high jump kick which is its hardest hitting move and just hits like a freaking nuke. Another Pokemon with Knock Off so I really like this because it forces none of the Pokemon on my team to, to feel like they have to throw because like Tangrowth usually sometimes feels like it has to have Knock Off but now it doesn't have to have that concern that I have Mind Shell, Tornadus, Dawn Fan, and I think one other thing. Well I have all these so far that all can run Knock Off so it really makes my uh, really makes all my Pokemon a little bit more versatile concern that none of them have to feel like they need Knock Off on their uh, moveset. Poison Jab, Power Up Punch, if I feel like uh, my opponent's going to be running a very slow team, I can maybe just Power Up Punch, get my attack up, and then really start to hit even harder. Um, Reflect is pretty interesting, Stone Edge, obviously, Swords Dance, and then it gets another Pokemon that gets Taunt, and also gets U-Turn for a Switch Initiative. So, this kind of complements my Offensive Regenerator uh, user in Tornadus really well. So now that we have two Regenerator Pokemon that Tornadus goes for a U-turn, my opponent switches in, let's say they switch in a, I don't even know, what would they try to, they try to switch in a Rock type on Tornadus, then I U-turn off of it, get into Mind Shell, and now that Pokemon's starting to get O-Code by a high jump kick. So I love the switch initiative of just getting into these threatening Pokemon that thread in with the others don't on my team. And the Regenerator core is just beautiful. And uh, it just it just it just works out. I'm really excited with the offensive prowess of this team so far. And um, then we can look at Mindchild's stats. Mindchild has that its HP stat. Mindchild's really frail, but that's heavily complemented by Regenerator to help it not be as frail. It still doesn't really want to switch in on anything, so that's something to be aware of. Um, however, though, the 125 attack stat off of a staff when you when you just go for those high jump kicks, you know something's getting nuked if your opponent doesn't have a switch in. Uh, so 125 attack stat, 95 special attack stat, so that's actually usable. So I might, don't be surprised if there's like a call mine, mine chow some week. That, that's actually very usable. And then the 105 speed stat, which is solid because it's, it, gets, it gets over that 100 hump, which is very solid that you want your offensive Pokemon usually to get, a, to get over, especially your offensive Pokemon that are as frail as mine chow. So yeah, mine chow, um, it's going to just complement the rest of the team extremely well. It gives me a very solid fighting type Pokemon. One of my absolute favorite to, favorites to use, and it gives me another Pokemon with Switch Initiative. So now we got Tornadus, Tapu Koko, and Mindchow all with Switch Initiative, which is uh, going to be very solid. That's going to be very, very solid. Then we get into um, our next offensive Pokemon, Speedy Offensive, Frel, Hard Hitter. And that is a Pokemon that I also had good success with in the MPL Division 2. That's going to be Sneasel. And obviously Sneasel's an NEF Pokemon, not fully evolved. However, Sneasel hits still like a truck. Considering that it all, at one point it was a fully evolved Pokemon before they actually came out with Weavile. So this Pokemon was meant to just be itself, but then it got another Pokemon. It's just Weavile's in, it, it's its own, in its own right a very threatening Pokemon. However, I'm excited to use Sneasel again because um, Dark types are very nice to have. That Stab knockoff just hits so much harder than a non-Stab knockoff, which is beautiful. Um, and then to complement Dark with Ice, that is just one of the most threatening typings in the game. It honestly might be the most threatening, um, debatable when you think of uh, 
uh, Mammoth Swine with its Ice Ground typing, but very threatening offensive typing, a uh, very good speed stat, and just uh, just a very good Pokemon in general. Considering that you can just not even on things that resist it, knock off their item, hit them hard, and then just get out of there and go into some defensive Pokemon to take the hit from there. And then when your opponent's team gets weakened down, there's few things, especially if they're nothing outspeeds. Sneasel, or if the only thing that outspeeds is weak to ice, you could just go for ice charge. So Sneasel can really clean up games for you as well. Um, so different items you can use, such as Choice Band, Life Orb, Focus Sash. Those are probably the main items you'll really use. Those are the main items I really use. Um, then we got its moveset, which consists of things such as Knock Off, uh icicle crash which is probably the this most hard hitting move it also gets taunt so another taunt user don't really have to prioritize taunt anything considering i have this many pokemon that can run taunt gets x's or gets swords dance um swords dance can help you just sweep your opponent's team once things are weakened or it gets pursuit so i can pursue trap things it gets um poison jab for those fairy types that want to switch in on it considering it's a dark type um, it does get the priority in Ice Shard, so another Pokemon with priority and very good priority in Ice Shard, and this time it's Stab, so that's very, very good because then it'll actually hit hard. Um, it gets Foul Play if you want to go for that. Just such a solid Pokemon, and I'm excited to have it on the team uh, for another season. And we could just quickly glance at his stats as a uh, Sneasel's gonna have that 95 attack stat, but when you couple that with a Life Orb or a Choice Band, it actually hits extremely hard, and then lots of things are either weak to Dark or Ice, so then you have this uh, super effective being um, calculated into its damage output as well. The 115 speed set is beautiful. As you can see, my team continue, continues to be fast, even though we have some really slow defensive Pokemon, continues to be fast. With a 115, a 105, a 121, a 130 speed set on the offensive Pokemon. And um, Sneasel can, it can maybe, it can actually live a hit from the special defense side, but don't really expect it to live any hits from the defense side, and that's why Focus Sash is a solid item on this thing. But I'm excited to have Sneasel on the team for another season. And I feel like it and the combination of it and Mind Shout together from an offensive standpoint will strike fear in my opponent's hearts. Um, moving from there, we get into a few more defensive Pokemon again. We get into another trio of defensive Pokemon because now I feel like our offense is looking very solid. Um, there's another typing that we're missing. I'll get into that eventually. But we get into our defensive Pokemon and that starts with Drudagon. And uh, Drudagon is, as you can say, I didn't have a Dragon type at this point. Um... Our dragon or still type at this point. So those are some typings I definitely wanted to prioritize getting now at this point. Is they're very they're extremely crucial in your draft. And uh, Drudagon, the most of the, the really good dragons were gone at this point. So Drudagon's a lower tier dragon type that I think is extremely solid, and I definitely don't mind having on the team because it brings another Pokemon with uh, hazard um, hazards to our team as we were completely relying on Donphan for hazards up until this point. So thankfully Drudagon brings Stealth Rocks also to its disposal, so we can use that. Then Drodagon just has this freaking niche and rough skin with the combination of Rocky Helmet when you couple those two together with Drodagon's very solid defense stat and excuse me and HP stat, you get a very solid uh, you get a nuisance to teams that want to just spam their physical type moves. I feel like this gave me one of the best answers to uh, fire type Pokemon that want to spam like Flare Blitz that already have decent recoil or just like Victini that wants to spam V Crate. Um, Drudagon just comes in and it tanks that hit and then the Pokemon ends up hurting itself more than it hurts Drudagon because Drudagon resists it and then the Pokemon that went for that attack takes rough skin damage and rocky helmet damage so very uh, just just very solid for switching in on my opponent's physical type attackers that our team may have some trouble with then it gets some interesting options even from the offensive side as um, it does get obviously Dragon Claw it's really nice that it also gets Dragon Tail so I can kind of just switch my opponent's team around with this thing and really just wear it down with Stealth Rocks which is nice to have um, didn't have anything else that could uh, I had a Roar user in Tapu Koko but I'm not going to be running Roar on Tapu Koko so this really gave me my first um, actual Pokemon that can just switch my opponent's team around uh, really gets Earthquake it gets uh, Fire Punch it gets uh, it gets Gunk Shot, which once again is really nice for Fairy types that want to try to switch in on um, Dredagon. 
Um, gunk shot on Dawn's man was more for the grass types. I want to switch into it. I don't know why I said fairy types. It's more so for the grass types. And then Dreadagon's for the fairy types. I want to switch it on. It gets glare, which is really nice considering that glare paralyzes. Um, it doesn't have the shoddy accuracy of Thunder Wave considering that Thunder Wave was nerfed. And glare actually goes through the ground type typing as well. So glare is actually really strong now. Really nice to have a Pokemon with glare. Um, then it gets things like Iron Head. If I don't want to go with Gunk Shot to try to hit Fairy Types, do have Iron Head. It gets Pursuit as well, which is just always nice to have on Pokemon. Um, it does also get Roar, but I most likely will use Dragon Tail unless I feel like um, my opponent has a Fairy Type that's just going to keep trying to switch in. Get Stealth Ducks, like I said. It gets Priority, so another Pokemon on Priority because it does get Sucker Punch, which is very solid Priority. Um, it gets Super Power. It gets Taunt. Another Pokemon with Taunt. But this is a slow Taunt, so I don't know how much I'll use that. And uh, then it gets Thunder Punch, which is just noteworthy, but nothing too crazy. But yeah, Jodagon is just going to be huge for switching into those really physical, hard hitters that just think that they have a really good matchup against my team. Jodagon comes in, and it hurts them more than they hurt Jodagon. So I like that a lot. Um, it really does scare my It really makes my opponent second guess their moves when they want to go for a hard hitting physical type move that actually makes contact with the Pokemon. So, like close combat, flare blitz, not the stone edges and the earthquakes. Obviously, those don't actually make contact. So, that's unfortunate, but the more threatening moves I feel are the ones that do make contact. Other than earthquake, that's a beautiful move, but the close combats, the flare blitzes, those are going to chunk my opponent's health more than they hurt Dreadagon. So, that's going to be really nice to have. Then we get into another defensive Pokemon, and this is actually the first Pokemon that I drafted that I wouldn't... Uh, well, there's a few that I probably wouldn't have drafted, some other options wouldn't have left. But this is where the Snipe finally comes in, and we get into Armaldo. And this is a Pokemon that I also have in the IBL. I'm excited to try to use this Pokemon and really show that Armaldo is... Um, it's, it's better than people give it credit. I'm really excited to try to show that, showcase that. However... I probably wouldn't have got Armaldo if Licky Licky wasn't sniped. I really, even though I do have a lot of regenerated Pokemon that can get their health back, and that uh, Tapu Koko has reliable recovery, um, Tangrowth has reliable recovery, Reuniclus has reliable recovery. Even though I have that, I still wanted a Pokemon that had Wish support and that had Hill Bell support, especially Hill Bell support, so that uh, my team didn't get really worn down due to Toxic and stuff like that. However, I unfortunately wasn't able to prioritize that when Licky Licky was sniped. That was the only uh, good wish pass wish passer that was left in the draft, and it was sniped at this point. So I ended up looking at some other options, and I saw I had to get a I think it was like an E tier Pokemon, or this might have been my D tier. I think this is my E tier. It was definitely my E tier. I had to get an E tier Pokemon. Armaldo looked like one of the only few solid ones there. Um, at least also bring gives me another spinner so that there's not so much pressure on Don Fan to spin away hazards. Um, considering that my team is a decent amount weak to have a uh, raw stealth rock. So um, it's good to have a secondary spinner. I'm excited to use Armaldo. Just a little disappointed that we couldn't somehow also get Licky Licky. But Armaldo brings about a very strong, powerful rock type stab in Stone Edge. Um, it does have um, interesting abilities. Um, I can't really use Swift Swim. I don't have a rain team. But uh, Battle Armor, not being able to get crit, it just kind of puts those unfavorable crits um the unfavorable RNG in your odds, it just kind of brings that into your favor, which is all, which is always good. I'll always take that. Um, Armaldo can use a bunch of items really well, mostly just the offensive items and then leftovers, and then resistant berries. Um, Armaldo gets a pretty decent uh, move spread and Aqua Jet for priority. Um, Earthquake to hit a lot of stuff hard. Also gets um, low kick. It gets knock off another knock off user. So that is. Honestly, getting ridiculous with how many Pokemon we have that get rock, uh, that get knock off. So now, literally, no Pokemon has to prioritize having it. Just make sure that one thing has it, and we're fine. It gets Rock Polish, so another Pokemon I may be able to Rock Polish up and then sweep a team with. Um, if they're a little bit slower, it gets Rock Blast, which if it hits all five times, will hit things extremely hard. It gets Swords Dance. It gets X Scissor for a solid stab Bug type move, um, and then it gets Stealth Rocks as well. So now we have another. Hazard Setter, other than just Jodagon and Dawn Fan, which is really good to have as well. Um, I love making sure that the niche that Pokemon provide, another Pokemon can also provide it so that uh, my opponent can't be too predictable and can't just uh, that I'm not too obvious in what some of the Pokemon are going to do when they're brought to the game. And uh, yeah, just some solid options in the move it does get. It's not extremely versatile, but it is good at what it does. And uh, that's getting away hazards, hitting hard with knockoff or its stab, one of its stab type moves, having that priority. And then uh, maybe rock polishing up and sweeping the team. So I'm excited to use um, Armaldo 
uh, in two different leagues uh, as of right now. So hopefully I can continue. I'll be using it in two different leagues. Hopefully I quickly adjust to how Armando's used and can make make it a lot more threatening than people kind of think it is currently. Then we get into our last defensive Pokemon. This is going to be our second to last pick. So we have one more Pokemon after this. This is going to be our still type. So we finally got our still type. And that's going to be Dublade. And uh, we currently didn't have a Eviolite user. So now we have an Eviolite user. We get our Steel type. We also get a Ghost type, which is really nice. A lot of my drafts don't have Ghost types. So my opponent can freely Rapid Spin away. This time I have a Ghost type. So I will be blocking your Rapid Spin unless you are an Excadrill and um, or Dawn fan. But that's on our team. So kind of get that. And uh, yeah, Dublade is extremely strong. It's a Pokemon that I have wanted to use because I saw how threatening Miguel used it in the last GBA that he did. Or was it, it was the last one he had a successful season, a really successful season in. He used Dublade extremely well in the championship, so I'm excited to use Dublade finally. Uh, um, considering that it Swords Dance up and then just kind of sweeps with its priority in um, Shadow Snake. So another Pokemon with a very, with a very, very solid priority move. Very few things um, resist or are immune to Shadow Snake. Um, Dublade's like one of the best sweepers. I know of so very salt sweeper it gets destiny bond if I feel like I want to go for that um, it gets it just it gets salt moves I can toxic a lot of things I want to switch in on this um, it gets sacred sword so you can still hit a lot of things hard that want to uh, still types that want to try to switch in on this or like just things I want to switch in hard on this you can hit them with some type of move that Dupe like gets and if not then you just uh, toxic them it gets pursuit so it can pursue trap Pokemon and it's just a solid Pokemon and I'm, I'm I'm happy that I'm able to finally use it, and I'm happy that I was able to get a still type for our Dragon Fairy Still Core. And then it has just has that blistering defense stat with the 150 defense stat, and then the 110 attack stat. If you don't hit this thing super effectively, it's gonna be hard to uh, from the defense from the physical end. If you don't hit it super effectively, it's gonna be hard to wear this thing down um, at all. And then uh, No Guard's also a really cool ability, considering that all moves will hit. It doesn't really have any moves that aren't uh, that aren't. Uh, that have shoddy accuracy so it kind of goes a little bit to waste but maybe i can find some type of usage for that and then another slow pokemon so once again another pokemon that would appreciate me setting up a trick room for it so watch out for trick room and um last but not least we'll get into our last pokemon and this is not a defensive pokemon this is a pokemon that i just kept my eye on considering that i knew i needed this typing in my draft because the one draft i didn't have this typing it really did show and i was in the mpl um I had a low tier typing of this type and um, Pokemon of this type and it just very much showed I didn't really bring it I actually didn't bring it to a single game I want to make sure I still got a solid Pokemon of this type and that is going to be a fire type I want to make sure I got a solid fire type and our fire type is going to be Volcarona um, I, I hadn't got my I think tier 2 Pokemon um, my second tier 2 Pokemon and I just kept my eye on Volcarona knowing that it probably was going to drop. It seemed like everyone either didn't have enough points for, for a tier 2 or that they already had their fire type. So I felt fine with just letting this drop all the way into the final round and then snagging it. And Volcarona is one of the absolute best setup sweepers in the game. Especially now that we have Z moves. Um, a lot of things I want to switch into Volcarona can't take a Z move from Volcarona. So I'm excited to use Volcarona. Probably have it sweep through uh, some teams hopefully this season. Um, I just have to prioritize rocks, not uh, just chilling on my side of the field. That's where you kind of see where I kept saying that my team was a little bit weaker to rocks. It, it kind of is. So I have to make sure that rocks don't really stay on our side of the field for Tornadoes, for Sneasel, and for Volcarona. As uh, they're some of my best offensive threats. So I need to make sure they don't uh, they don't just sit on my side of the field. So that's where Armado seems like a better pick. Considering that I don't want Don Fan to have to come every single week just to get rid of hazards. Um... However, Quiver Dance is just, it's its uh, its pretty much the best uh, setup move and it makes Volcarona such an amazing setup sweeper as uh, Quiver Dance will, if we can get to it, raises every single, well not every single, but it raises your special attack, your special defense, and speed all by one stage. That is just beautiful. Um, it even makes you stronger on the special defense, so it's just like a, a boost to call mine considering that it even raises your speed, so that's just beautiful. Um, then Volcarona obviously gets Bug Buzz, that's a solid Bug Stab type move that hits extremely hard. It gets Calm Mind already, it gets Fairy Dance as a very solid Fire type move that almost nothing else gets. And that has a 50% raise chance to raise your special attack stat, which makes it an even more threatening sweeper. Um, it gets Giga Drain, which allows it to hit those water types that want to switch in um, after it boosted. 
a lot of things aren't taken in Giga Drain. Even gets Hurricane, another Pokemon and Switch Initiative in U-Turn. Um, it gets it gets reliable recovery in Morning Sun or Roost, probably Roost. I'm really concerned that Morning Sun relies on weather. Um, it gets Tailwind, so another supporting option for our team. It gets Willow List to help support the team if it has to play that role in certain weeks. And uh, Volcarona is just a solid Pokemon. I'm excited to finally be able to use this thing. I've never been able to draft Volcarona, or I just never really prioritized it. And uh, this time around, it's the fire type we're going to be using, so I'm excited. 85 HP stat, definitely pretty solid. 135 special attack stat, really solid. 105 in special defense, also extremely solid. And then that 100 speed stat, which gets it gets you to where you really where you that crucial that crucial point for offensive Pokemon, and especially after uh, Quiver Dance, then it's extremely fast. So that's that's just so solid. Pretty lackluster on the physical end. We got lots of Pokemon to, f to switch in on physical attacks. So I'm excited to have Volcarona. It gets uh, a solid ability in Flame Body, which means that if I am running it defensively and I know that someone's going to be going for physical type attacks on it, I can uh, um, make it really defensive and then throw on Flame Body and then it has that 30% chance to just uh, get a burn on there which is extremely nice. So I'm excited to have Volcarona for the season. Like I said, I will really have to prioritize not letting rocks just subsist on my side of the field, but I do feel like we'll be able to do that decently well. Um, so yeah, that's the team. I'm excited to use it all. Tapu Coco, T uh, Tornadus T, Dawn, Fantangrowth, Reuniclus, Mindchow, Sneasel, Dredagon, Armaldo, Dewblade, and Volcarona. Hope you guys are excited for another season. Rocking out with your Salaz and Salazzles. I'm going to try to bring home another championship. We'll see if we can do it with the squad. There's definitely some holes. I wasn't able to get a Wish Passer. I wasn't able to get um, a, a Water type. I have no Water type at all. I wasn't able to get... Uh, I, I'm kind of weak to rocks, and I don't have the best hazard removal, so that might be an issue. And then I don't have Hill Bill. But I feel like we'll be able to... to uh, we'll be able to overcome that. We have the offensive prowess to just run through opponent's teams. I'll just have to play on my toes. And uh, play a little bit out of my style. That's the only thing. I feel like this team is currently just a little, a, a slight little bit out of my play style. But considering week one we didn't have Reuniclus, we actually had, I think, Mesprit. And now we'll have Reuniclus. I do feel like that will make a monumental difference in this team. So, hope you guys are ready for another exciting season. I can't wait to uh, for us to get into the thick of the season and really start to find our ground with this team. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully I don't make a fool of myself, but thank you guys for tuning into the draft analysis. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Um, I'll see you guys in some of the battles we have. Battles go up, I think, every Monday. So um, that might be wrong. Um, if that's wrong, expect me to correct that. <laughs> but uh, thank you guys for tuning in. I do appreciate it. I'll see you guys. Peace.